Hey guys, Barbara here. Today I want to share with you five different dishes you can make in the electric skillet. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. So the first recipe is going to be bread pudding and I'm going to use my recipe but half the amount that's in the book okay three slices of bread and I'm just cutting it up into cubes see right here one two three because I know you guys won't believe me that this recipe uses this little bit of bread okay so now instead of using three cans of evap and three cans of sweetened condensed we're gonna do one and a half and one and a half of each okay and I didn't even realize that sweetened condensed and evap comes by different sizes so right here it's like the 14 ounce so this is the first can I already put the um, one and a half of the evaporated milk now one and a half of the sweetened condensed and instead of five eggs we're gonna be doing three eggs so I'm just doing half the recipe of my regular but bread pudding recipe okay so very simple I'm gonna put some extract and it's lemon I always do different extract that nobody is expecting dump all the bread in soak it all up and I have the uh, electric skillet preheating to like 250 I tried to bake everything on 350 when I first started using the skillet but it'll burn if you put it too high okay so put it low and just let it go slow and low until it's done and see it's done now it's time to just serve now let's move on to the second recipe so I'm showing you that it's 250 that I baked it on this is the second recipe banana cake I have these bins like this with all the powdered ingredients to all these different things here so I don't buy anything in a box anymore I just make my own so I put the dry ingredients on the top like on the um, this part on the outside see this is the dry ingredients for all the things that I'm doing and then the wet ingredients goes in the middle up the top right here see this is the wet ingredients that we're gonna need to make the banana cake all right so we're gonna do banana cake guys so I have three bananas here that are sizzling <laughs> they're so overripe that they sizzle so just I'm just just let me go ahead and squish and then I'm just gonna break my egg right here remember this is a part of the wet ingredients and just go ahead and beat up my little egg and then add the bananas to this and then the sugar and you guys saw how much of everything right because it's on the lid the butter melted butter some extract and whisk this is so simple put the dry ingredients if you have another banana bread recipe that you want to use you can try it grease the skillet again we're gonna make it go slow and low between 200 and 250 let me just get this well incorporated all right we're almost there guys almost there yeah, so we have a wonderful batter now. Dump it into the electric skillet and just let it go. Cover it up with the lid. Remember now the skillet is kind of cooking, so that's why you want to keep it low, all right? But first of all, you always want to level off the things that you're going to bake. So just put the lid on and when a toothpick inserted comes out clean, you know this is done. Dump it out. Let me shut it off first. Dump it out and then cut let me tell you about this banana bread guys this was so moist then I made the mistake of putting this in the cake holder thingy along with some cookies Jada made and it made the cookies get so soft and soggy and the cookies tasted like bananas so beautiful this is so gorgeous I promise you're gonna love this one okay try this one and tell me how you like it the third one now is gonna be enchiladas. So I have spices in there, cayenne, salt, pepper, garlic powder, it's one teaspoon of each, okay? And I'm cooking like two pounds of loose meat here, ground beef, in the electric skillet. I didn't put any oil, I just put the ground beef right in there, squished it up with my little potato squisher. And now I'm adding the spice to this. 
and just allowing it to cook a little bit more. I always allow the beef to cook for about 20 minutes to a half hour. This is my enchilada sauce that I have at the side already. Four cans of tomato sauce with the Dutch cheese and some diced up onions and then add salt and pepper later you know, to this. So I'm allowing this to simmer. You can use any enchilada sauce that you like, okay? This is the, the Belizean one that I make. And so now I'm gonna add jalapenos. And I love jalapenos in everything that I do because I love the flavor of jalapenos. So just let me give this a stir. And then now I'm scooping this out with my skimmer because I want to leave all this oil and gravy behind because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it, okay? So let me get all this beef out and just set it aside. We're not going to um, bake it or anything. Just set it aside. And this is what I'm going to do is fry my corn tortillas in this little bit of uh, gravy and oil. And just fry. Ah, we're going to need about eight 12 I think 12 pieces so now that's four pieces on the bottom I've I've I didn't even have to wipe out the bottom of the thing because it the tortilla soaked everything up and so just go ahead and dump my beef dump the enchilada sauce and then some cheese because we're making enchiladas right so it won't be good if we didn't put any cheese so this is just some mozzarella that I grated and then I'm gonna put another layer of the tortillas so that's why I say we need 12, right? 4 times 3 is 12, yeah. So then the beef again. You guys get the idea, right? This is so good. You guys are going to want to make this, especially when it's hot, okay? So now enchilada sauce again. And of course cheese. So you, you guys get the gist. I'm just kind of building this like a casserole or like a lasagna, but it's not noodles. <laughs> so four more pieces of the tortillas. And if you seat them wrong, just reseat them. And put the topping and the cheese, of course. And then what I'm gonna do next is just put the lid on. And we're just gonna let this cook on low. See, always low, not more than 250, until everything's melted. This is so delicious. You're gonna wanna try this, okay? Let's make English muffins. I have all the ingredients right here on the screen for you, so just go ahead and freeze the video and you can write it down, okay? I'm adding the sugar to the all-purpose flour and then the yeast, and if you notice, I'm not activating the yeast. I'm just gonna add it in dry. And then to this, I'm gonna add my melted butter, and then of course my one egg, and I'm gonna be using buttermilk, so make sure you use real buttermilk because that will make it more legit. Now let me tell you guys something about English muffins. The reason that I don't really care so much for it is because you have to roll it in um, cornmeal and I really don't like to bite into that cornmeal. It's kind of like biting into sand. But I found out that if you don't roll it in the cornmeal, it doesn't look legit. So I'm just kneading this up into a dough, which I'm going to set aside and let it, let it double up in size in one hour. See, one hour later. What I'm going to do is just roll it out into a rectangular size on the counter and I want it to be an eighth of an inch thick and no thicker because I tried some earlier today and when you get them too thick they don't cook so well on the inside. So let me go ahead and roll this out flat as I can go and then using my biscuit cutter I'm just going to cut as many out as I can. If you guys notice I didn't put the um, cornmeal down on the counter because um, if I rolled it out on the cornmeal right now when I pick up the leftover dough, um, it's going to have cornmeal on the inside when I re-knead it. And I don't want that. I've tried, Like I said, I tried it earlier this morning and there are a few things that I did before that I'm, I'm going to do differently. So see, let me pick up this amount of dough. So I'm going to re-knead this to get more biscuits. But if I had done it like I did it earlier, no, let me show you how thin it is. And roll it into the... Um, on the cornmeal first, see like this, I did this one earlier and this was the piece that was left over. So now the cornmeal is all on the inside of the dough. I hate it like that. Let me show you how inside of one of them look though, okay? Take a look, see? It looks really legit. It looks just like an English muffin. I'm so proud of that. So I'm gonna take all the pieces, the single pieces and just roll them in the cornmeal top and bottom. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and re-knead the dough that I have set aside so I can get more of the English muffins. You're going to get quite a bit out of this three cups of flour right here. I promise you, see, more cornmeal so that when we bake it up, 
it looks like the way English muffins are supposed to look. So that's why I'm doing this, okay? So the skillet is preheating. And again, everything is slow and low that we're doing here today. So let me get some more in here while I'm at it. So you guys are going to be so happy with the way these turn out though because they look really, really good when I'm done with them. So let me go on ahead and get this last one here and just roll it. Just showing just, oh, by the way, if you don't put it in the cornmeal too and you set it aside like in flour, it'll still stick to the countertop, okay? Cover it all up and let it rise for about 20 minutes or so. Don't go too far away because they double in size pretty quickly. I'm going to re-knead that. I'm going to re-knead that. So see, this one's kind of fat. I'm going to show you how this one's going to look. This is the right size. And then 20 minutes later, look at this one right here that I wasn't, look at my fat one. Look at my fat one first. And then look at this one right here that I wasn't able to do with the biscuit cutter because that was the last one. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put them into the electric skillet. The skillet is um, already preheated. And we're going to cook them on um, one side first for a few minutes. And then we're going to flip them and cook them on the other side. So that's why I'm telling you if it gets too fat or too thick, the inside part won't cook so well and you will have a biscuit that's kind of clammy on the inside. It's going to be like undercooked or raw looking. So see, they're looking pretty legit, right? Look at them, guys. Hey, I should open up a bakery. Who wants to join me? Now we're going to do brownies. So again, my tub, if you notice, I have all my dry ingredients here for the brownies and I keep these like locked and loaded. And then all I have to do is add my wet ingredients. This is some cooking oil, of course. And I'm going to use my skillet here. I'm going to grease it in a little bit. So let me start by dumping the dry ingredients first into this big bowl. And normally when I mix up my stuff, I, I whisk it in the little tub. So you don't have to whisk again if you don't want to. So I've added the cooking oil. And it uses four eggs for this batter. So first I'm just going to go ahead and toss two eggs in here. Just to show you that you can, you know, just toss it in here and just whisk. Or you can, you know, put the eggs in a separate bowl and whisk them in the separate bowl first. And then put them into your batter, which is actually a lot easier, to tell you the truth. So just dump it in here. Put some of the um, vanilla extract. And then just whisk this until a batter forms. You want to get all the dry ingredients incorporated with the wet. Then dump it into the electric skillet. Of course, you want to go ahead and level off the whole batter because you want everything to be even and actually since I did this video I this is the only way that I do my brownies now I'm not baking none of this stuff in the oven because it's too hot right now in the summertime so set it to the low two or two uh, 200 or 250 actually will work cover it up walk away come back toothpick inserted comes out clean we know it's done see all those holes that I poked into it let me bite into it it's still right in the middle of summer right now for us in Southern California. It's actually the middle of August. No one wants to cook on the stovetop or in the oven. So it's either outdoors on the barbecue grill or in the electric skillet. So I'm hoping that these five menus or five recipes will inspire you to come up with your own recipe for the electric skillet, okay? If you do, would you come back and share with us in the comments below or make your own video? Share the video with me so I can promote it for you, especially if you have your own cooking channel. Come on guys, sometimes I think because I only have like 25,000 plus subbies that I can't really help anybody else out because who am I? I'm not big, but you know what? I can share. You know, you guys have been sharing me all around town. I can share. So anyways, if you make something, come back and share it with us, okay? I want to thank you guys so much for watching the show, for liking, for subscribing, for visiting my website, and for commenting. Until I see you guys again, take care. Hey guys, I just got interviewed by the mayor of my town. Take a look at the two pictures that will follow. And by the way, I'll see you guys right here on Wednesday for the extended version of the show.